The weather is nice and you decide to go for a run. We all know the first things that start to happen. We'll start sweating, your, your breathing might become heavy, and also your heart rate will increase because more oxygenated blood has to go to your muscles and to your brain. Now, if you do this for a bit longer and you get into your stride, some people might experience what we call a runner's high. Well, the majority of the athletes said that they never experience this at all. So all that they feel after they've done their run, they feel nauseated, they feel sweaty, they have a high heart rate, but nothing compared to this euphoric state that some people describe. Some people might compare it to something spiritual, but I quite like this quote by triathlete Scott Dunlap who compared this to two Red Bulls, vodka, more ibuprofen, and also a winning lottery ticket in your pocket. So what's the science behind this? And how does this actually work? So I assume that this runner's high was associated with endorphins which are released. And it is true that when these endorphins that are released, they do prevent your muscles from feeling the pain. So it will help you as you go along. What we also found now is that they can't pass the blood-brain barrier, so it seems unlikely that they would have an effect on your brain. Research has shown that the chemicals that might be responsible for this euphoric feeling is endocannabinoids. So as the name kind of implies, it is similar to cannabis, but these are biochemical substances that are naturally produced within your body. And the difference between those and endorphins is that they can actually pass the blood-brain barrier so they can reach all the way to your brain. So it seems more likely that they would have like an impact on how you feel. But while you're here watching on YouTube, you might wonder what's the theory behind our brain rewarding us for this prolonged period of exercise? What's the reason for it when I can just sit in front of my TV and eat chocolates? Well, we can't really explain it that well. But they say that it might have something to do with when a human had to scavenge and hunt for food. Because the release of these endocannabinoids, so these are these substances that I said might cause these runners high, they found that if you would put dogs through this exercise and dogs have a similar pattern as hunting as we used to have, they did find this release. So what it might actually be is that rather than starving, you would have this release of these substances to make sure that you could go on hunting, your muscles would feel less tired and you were more likely to actually gather the food or hunt your prey. And previously I've spoken about some of the other chemicals that are associated with mood or pleasure. So if you're interested in the work around dopamine, which is another chemical associated uh, with a feeling of well-being, you can have a look at this interesting TED talk, which is in the link below, or you can see what the effect of this neurotransmitter is in your body in this recommended video. But it's not just a short-term runner's high which is good for you. They also say in the longer term that regular exercise helps uh, to develop new blood vessels, which is better to nourish your brain. You're better at switching between tasks. And also it's known to cause an increase in the hippocampus, which is a part in your brain which is responsible for a number of different functions. I am a keen runner and hopefully this video inspired you to do some exercise yourself. But if you're interested in more of the science behind some other regular everyday life things, such as for instance looking at the science of coffee and caffeine, then please have a look at some other videos within this place.